Hi, my name is Sherry, and today I am going to show you another stamp creation with the Harvest Hellos. And it is a stamp bundle that is in the Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog. And this catalog actually starts in September, so this is a little bit of a sneak peek. Um, if you are a demonstrator, you can pre-order. If you're not a demonstrator, then August is a great time to sign up to be one. If you, that Stampin' Up! has some specials and they're giving you... Uh, extra freebies so you pick whatever's in your kit and in August you get to pick more so you can also you can pick anything in the annual catalog you get a free paper pumpkin and in August you also get to pick additional free stuff and then you even get a little bit more in September if you sign up in August and that special ends at the end of August and anybody that joins my team in August you always get a bunch of stuff to be part of my team and um, we can't give product but this month I'm giving a lot of samples and I'm giving some of these samples that I'm making on my YouTube um, tutorials this month so you'll have those ready to go to use if you are going to do a business or just to use personally if you're just gonna buy for the discount because welcome all kinds of people and you can be wherever you want in the United States you have to be in the United States so I'm gonna use this it's a called the Harvest Hello and I can't show you the inside of the catalog but I can show you this um, and also in regards to showing you the inside of the catalog I've had several people ask now what my online class is for September um, and I have to get all of this stuff and lay it out because I can't show you the inside of the catalog and there's no picture online for it yet I will get that done next week so check my blog next week and I may even do like hand show you. I was going to try to get a Facebook Live this week. It's not going to happen. I have too much going on. Um, but I'm going to show you. This is a card and this is the tutorial previous to this one. Um, so I wanted to show you that because it's the same stamp set and same punch that I'm using. And I'm going to make a pumpkin again. Um, but I did want to show you this because I don't think I'll do a tutorial unless there's like a huge outcry for it because I already cleaned everything up and it's all put up but I have this one pumpkin left because if you watch the tutorial I start to color this and I didn't finish it um, so I finished coloring it and then I had it and I thought well I might as well make it into a card my cows were still on the table because I'm not OCD about cleaning my stuff up um, so sometimes my table has projects from a few weeks back it's still laying there till I get a cleanup day and then I just do it all at once um, I do the same thing with my taxes, so, you know, there you go. Um, but I just added the cow to the to the stamp, and I wanted to do this if you didn't have the designer series paper. So even though I don't, there's no paper on this, this is a stamp, and I stamped it in the peacock, and then I just used the same blends to make it into a flannel. These are, if you caught my Facebook Live last week, then I ran these through for you to see the new frames. Those are the Halloween frames still laying on my table. So I added those. Um, these are the new copper stars in there. Um, and then the words are out of this pumpkin set. So you could also use the words out of the cow set, you know, because every pumpkin patch needs a cow and every cow pumpkin patch needs to have some copper stars. So it was just a fun little fun um, play with the pumpkin. The pumpkin card I'm gonna make now, nothing like it. It's totally different. So let's get going on this. And then I am moving on to something else. I'm gonna try to do one more card with the holiday catalog because I've spent too much time on this silly pumpkin and then I have to get to camp. Um, actually, I have I have a, my girlfriends and I that do creating and sharing the life you love. Uh, we do a, a Facebook for that. It's really for Stephen at demonstrators, but over time it's, become for everybody. So we have a public page that's for everybody and a private page that's just for demonstrators. Um, but on Monday we are going to be, I don't, during our live, we're going to do using something that's been around for a minute with something new. So you might want to catch us do that. So I have to get that done before Monday. So this is um, in the catalog. This is called our new Mercury paper. Um, it's really pretty. There is a right and a wrong side. Well, I'm, it's not right and wrong, but the two sides are different. Um, for this card, doesn't really matter what size you, what side you use, but I'm going to take the Versamark, which is a clear sticky pad. This Ver Versamark is very, very old, and the reason it was laying on my table is because when I did the um, smushy faux metal technique the other day, back when we used to do it, that's how old this pad is. Um, sometimes to build it up another layer, we would smash this on and do a second layer. 
I decided when I melted my copper, I didn't need that, but that's what this is. You can see it has silver embossing powder in it um, from probably 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago. So don't worry about using your stuff. That's what we buy it for is to use it. It doesn't need to be pristine because I do have some pristine Versamark pads over there, but this was lying here and it works. So I do want to tell you when you stamp on this, it's slippy. It's kind of like window sheet with a print on it. So just make sure it doesn't wobble. So we're going to stamp Versamark on that. And then I tried this a couple of different ways. You can tell. Um, I tried it with black first because I thought maybe I really wanted to notice it, but it was too much for the card. Again, really old. Check out the blue label. It works fine. It does make me maybe want to do the metal foam metal technique and use this up so I can buy some new. So I'm just going to emboss this. I've just come in from the pool and I washed my hands. So there's going to be a little bit of flux on there, which if you were doing it on paper, you might want to get those off. It's just going to kind of all meld with the mercury glass. So for this, it doesn't really matter. I also tried, I'll just tell you some of the things I tried, because you know that's what we do. We try and some things work and some things don't. I tried to color it with the blends and it didn't dry. It may have dried, but I was really impatient, so I let it sit for like 30 seconds and then I touched it and it wasn't dry. I tried stamping it with a memento, didn't dry, which I didn't expect it to. I pulled the stays on out, I have it here, and then I thought, well, I'm just gonna emboss it. So I'm gonna stop talking for a second so you can see me emboss. Let me stand up so you get a little bit closer. You do it from the bottom first so it doesn't blow away. It doesn't take long. You can see where that's kind of smeary down there. And now that it's starting to change, I'll move it up here. You don't want to do it any longer than necessary to see it'll bubble up your stuff. Make sure right here it needs it. Right there it needs it. So don't, like you do with paper, you might just keep waving this over it as you figure out where, where it's got it and where it's not. But this would melt eventually. So just um, keep turning your gun on and off until you know that it's melted. But you can see now it's all melted. And then we're going to take our punch. I guess I need to sit back down because I can't see when I stand up. I often stamp standing up. And then when I do these videos, it feels unnatural to me. So I'm going to punch this. You are going to get the extra of this. And if you try to trim it to save it, then you may not be able to punch this because it's a little bit tricky to punch. I just laid it on the cup. Um, but just save your leaves. If you watched me the other day, I have a whole little leaf collection going of things that have popped out. Because you need the stability of the extra um, paper, if you cut this in a little strip, when you go to punch it, it's just going to all cave in on the punch and it's not going to work. So don't try that just to save it with punching the leaf. So take that out. Look how pretty that is. And I've kind of based this off of what's trendy right now in pumpkins or fall decor. And I know that pink ones are because my friend Tanya, who does the videos with us, had a birthday last week. And we got her a pink pumpkin at Home Goods for her birthday. So to do this, to make my pumpkin pink, this is petal pink paper. I'm just going to take my snail that looks like it's going to run out. You just need a tiny bit because you don't want to see it through. And just mount that right on top. Okay, and then this is just a white card. So I have Whisper White. I'm gonna move this out of the way because it has a little bit of silver dust on it. And then I have my Petal Pink ink. And I pulled the words Blessed because I really like this font and I like the size of it. And it goes well, I think, for fall, for autumn, Thanksgiving. But you could equally do happy birthday. Um, the words that come in this particular stamp set are all kind of small, and I wanted something bigger. But you could get, there is the new set in the catalog, the annual catalog, that has the big Thanksgiving words. So if you were doing Thanksgiving cards, you could die cut those. 
but I wanted this to be a soft color. So I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna mount it. This is, if you watch the other card, this is much quicker <laughs> than the three pumpkins. Although, I will say when I did the other card, it would be perfect for home decor if you do those samplers. Um, you can whip up a bunch of those pumpkins and use them in your samplers. If you do the ones where it says home, did I take all those off? Yeah. Um, then the, the pumpkins could stand in for your O. They would make cute um, frames. Or you could do the card and just do one pumpkin. You don't have to do all three. So now this is the petal pink and it is called organdy striped ribbon. Pull off about this much. And this is another case of where when you get to the end of your roll or you have some off cuts, because you know I encourage you to pull lots of ribbon off when you tie a bow and just um, so you have enough and then save your little off cuts. So this is a perfect time to use those little off cuts. But before I do that, I'm going to take my scissors and do this part. I think that I must be stuck in like a late 90s time warp because I, I find myself like with that faux metal and now this, this is some stuff that we used to do all the time. Just take your snips and drag it around to the edge because I didn't want to layer another color. Um, but I just put this on top. I wanted white on white, but when I did it, it was just flat. And I didn't want to pull any dies out because I wanted to die car, a card with no dies. Die free. That sounds like it, whoops. Like it has, um, oops, I'm really, this one's really getting vintagey. But you want it to kind of look torn. And you'll see on my other one, I intentionally, on the corners where I don't get it, I fold, fold it. So those will all work. And it's partly because I'm doing it at the angle so you can see it. If you do it up close to you, you don't care it as much. <coughs> Still have my gold. This is actually the longest part of this card. But I like the look that it gives. It gives some dimension to the, the panel. So I'm going to try to get these corners a little better so I can fold those. So there's where, where you ripped them. Just kind of fold them in. You just want it to look a little distressed. That was a word we used to use a lot on cards when we would distress them. Shelly is a fan of distressing her cards too. The founder of Stampin' Up. Okay, now we'll go back to this. That way I won't knock it off. So what we're going to do, we're going to get your glue dots. So take one glue dot. And kind of make a U shape like this. And then get another glue dot. And put it down in the middle of your U. Trying to do it so you can see it and put it here so you have like a, a W, not really a W, but two U's. And then just kind of wad it together. And you're going to be able to mix this, like pull it and stuff when you put it on here. So don't worry too much about it. So put one here. Can you see how it's, I've squished it together so it's holding it. Lift that off and then flip it around and get the other side. I should tear that bit off. And then I'm going to just let this sit here. I wanted to have it ready. Now you've made like your own little rabbit ear kind of bow. So just get that. Oh, where'd I put my... And then I just need the little squiggly top. For my pumpkin. A little grapevine wreath. And you don't really want it to touch because the bow obviously is going to touch a lot of it. So kind of go out further than you might. There you go. And then I'm going to take one more glue dot. And I'm going to stick it down here. So when I take this off. I have something to make sure I grab it with it. And then if you don't like the way it looks or you don't like the angle, which I'm going to turn it so I can see it, you can kind of mess with it and just get it to hold. I kind of want mine to go more this direction. 
So just pull it. It's just held on with glue dots. If they lift up, just put another one on there. But I don't want to cover up my grapevine, so maybe I'm not going to go that much. My other grapevine on my other card goes out a little bit further. But you know, some, sometimes we get caught up in making it look exactly the way we think it needed to look, or if you are at a camp or a class, or you know, you're trying to copy something that you see online, don't get caught up in making it look exactly like that because nobody's going to compare the two of them but you. Okay, and then these are the leaves trinkets. So if you're the only one that cares that it is perfect, the person who gets it is not going to know that my thing goes a little bit different, so it's fine. So these are in the annual catalog, and obviously the copper would also be beautiful, but I was trying to keep two colors. Copper's my color, but the silver looks really pretty too, and it's keeping it one color. So just add a glue dot, and then just stick that on there. So you know I had the glue dot on there, and you could kind of see it, but this covers it all up. Look how pretty that is. You see? Super, super pretty, really, really easy. And then just a couple more things. I have, these are the basic sequins from the catalog. These are often, they have been my thank you gift a couple of times. So if you, when you go to my website and you purchase, every month there's a thank you gift. This month it is, it's maybe the basic pearls, I think this month, which are also on this card. But these have the petal pink. So I'm gonna add two of these. Let's add one here. Again, I'm looking at my card upside down. And then it has, I'm not sure what color this is, but it, it may be silver. So I'm gonna add two of these. Normally we go for odd numbers when you're adding stuff like this, but because I'm gonna add some pearls, I thought it looked okay. So then the basic pearls. And I do think that these are my thank you gift of the month. Sometimes my months go so fast. Um, in the last couple of months, I've had a, um, stretch of choosing things that have gone on back order so I went with something that is basic and has been around for a while I'm thinking solely the basic pearls can't go on back order because then I find out I'm sending thank you gifts that way later than I like so with this I'm going to go odd number let me turn around so I can see it I think I'll do a big one and you can see I'm just taking the edge of my take my pick tool mm. We're done. Just have to mount this together, and I'm 99% certain this is going to run out because I can see it. Uh, nope, look, just enough. And then you, because the edge is, I didn't want to use any dimensionals because the ripped up edges give us just enough. See how pretty that is? Here's my other one, and you can see where my bow is a little bit different, but they're equally, there's they don't have to be the same. It's a trap we fall into. And I know if you teach classes that that often happens at your classes where everybody, or some people, some people have it a little bit worse than others where it ha they feel it has to be exactly the same. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Switch it up. It's okay. It's art. Enjoy it. It should make you happy, not stressed. So here you go. So here are three. Let me show you the other two again. You couldn't have three more different looks and of course there's also the apple apple and I've seen some really creative girls do some watermelon what else have I seen but there's a lot of stuff you can do with that stamp set which again you can purchase it on um, September 4th and I will um, have it I can't put the links down below on my website because the catalog is not live but if you check back early in September I'll try to get the links up um, I'll do one master post with a picture of a card and then all of the links down below if you want to come get that stuff and again check back for my free online class you can see what the it's going to be come together is going to be the the featured stamp set for the online class for September so everybody have a great day and I hope you've enjoyed the stamp set um, I heard when it first came out that some people didn't think it was all that but I think it's a lot of fun so have a great day bye